Hey, I'm Mark, and this homestead here is where I'm lucky enough to call home. I live here with my partner Alice and two dogs, Gigi and Kaya. We came to Portugal in 2021 to find a homestead, pursuing a dream of ours of becoming more self-sufficient and connecting us back with nature. In February 2022, we found our perfect property in the beautiful Sao Mamad Natural Park in Alentejo. After one year on a homestead experiencing one of the hottest summers and wettest winters on record, we've learned a hell of a lot, but we're learning more every day. Follow us as we navigate life on our Quinta, doing many of these things for the very first time and acquiring a bunch of new skills along the way. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. So I don't know if you can see, but this grass behind me is taller than me in most places. I mean, it's not that hard, because I'm quite short. But um, yeah, we need to get on with cutting a lot of this stuff down. Probably left it a little bit later than I would have liked to. Um, but April was so, so dry. I was kind of holding out for a, a bit of rain before, before doing it, as I still want some of the grass to, to grow and come through. Because it's been so hot, we've had a lot of high risk days which uh, in fire regulation terms means that we can't use the tractor, especially because it's got exhaust fumes. It's obviously um, using a, a metal attachment as well. So it could, it, could, if, it could spark. You can still use a trimmer with like a nylon wire, but no metal attachments. So the bulk of the stuff I could probably do with the tractor. Uh, one of our friends is coming to help us with some of the land clearance next week. Yeah, we need to get all this, this cleared and down. Obviously, we want to make sure that we're going into the summer that we've cleared everything and everything is sort of um, fire breaked and everything is down and there's not kind of all this grass here. It's all, all around the land, really. I mean, some areas it, it's not as bad as it was last year. Uh, in terms of in terms of growth but everything sort of shoots up around this time of year anyway everything's going to seed so yeah i'll just show you around some of the areas we're gonna uh go over with the tractor i mean look the grasses here are like up to where the tree is so we'll cut all this cut all this back yeah, this area is quite overgrown as well. This is where the pond's going to be. But I don't know when we're going to get that dug now. So. Our other land's not as bad because the shepherd puts his sheep on there. And uh, it keeps the grasses down. There's a lot of kind of overgrowth like this, thistles and these other um, sort of plants that they the sheep don't like to eat at all. They just don't touch them. So they kind of dominate a little bit more. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to get a bulk of that done today. Um, it's quite quick. The, the tractor goes for everything quite quick. So yeah, it's a good thing, good thing to have. The only thing is because our land is quite sloped, um, there's bits that I can't get to on the tractor. So we do have to do a, a strimmer. But if I can get a, the most most of it done with the tractor, then I think that um, that kind of just just sort of ticks a job off off as well. I actually suffer with really bad hay fever. So when I was doing this last year, I was lit just literally like, I tried to have a dust mask on, I tried to have goggles on everything, but still my hay fever was just terrible. So I was just like basically driving around the tractor and my nose dripping and like sneezing constantly. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how we get on with it anyway. <laughs> Before attaching the brush hog, I needed to remove the cargo box.
and now to attach the brush hog which wasn't as fiddly as I remember it being last year. So I just did the final tightening, just so it's not swinging too much. So I don't know how these work. Uh, basically this is connected to a transmission gear in the tractor, which uh, spins uh, a, a chain underneath. I'll show you in a second. Um, and then obviously this is all connected to be able to pick it up. You can really feel the weight of this attachment. So, um, you know, if I'm going up a hill, I need to kind of, kind of have it down a little bit, otherwise the tractor does um, does tip a little bit, but we have got quite a lot of weight on the front of this tractor. So as you can see, this just this chain goes round and round, spins very, very fast, and pretty much cuts anything down, which is which is cool. A bit rusty. I had to grease it up a lot because it's been sat, sat, uh, sat around for a while, so hopefully it works all right. But uh, yeah, it's a good tool to have, I think, especially when you've got a lot of. Um, a lot of land cut, like a streamer, it does do the job, but uh, you know, like some of the big areas, especially where it gets really thick, is this is ideal. It's bits of the land like this that are a bit sloped that I need to be careful on, so I'm taking it a little bit slow. But to be honest with you, this is about as fast as I can go on the tractor doing this anyway, because you have to have it in a low gear at very high revs for the chain on the attachment to spin properly. Now time to tackle the really long grass.
So I'm just moving all of this so I can get to the, well, around it. I'm going to have to move this anyway because this is where the pond's going to be eventually. And I thought I'd just seen a ghost And I looked down at what he wrote I said, son, when you grow up you'll be fine I know you've got questions on your mind Okay, so I've just done all of this as well, but uh, forgot to press record, which is great. And I put the drone away for this one, so I um, needed to charge the batteries. But yeah, this is all the old veg garden. There was still some chard and stuff growing in here. You can smell the onions uh, from where I've gone through them. A lot of onion seeds and things. But yeah, it looks so different when all the brush is cut back. Still need to do some of this area. I've got a raised bed in there and that's the worm farm. I want to move up to the new composting area. And then I need to do all this and all around there as well. So that's the next job. I took out an This area I've got to be a little bit careful because there's two pipes which I haven't buried. One for the irrigation for the polytunnel, which um, obviously you know that that's temporary. And uh, the hose pipe for the polytunnel. So I'm going to move the hose pipe and then I'm just going to pull the irrigation hose. Um, we'll push it back, do this side, then put it across and then do the other side.
I didn't get up this far with the tractor last year, I think because maybe I wasn't so confident in it. I only just got it really. So this area is like super, super sloped. So you can see the house over there. Never been able to get up there before. Septic tanks around here somewhere. So I just need to make sure that I don't hit the, the bit where it is. I think it's there. So I should be able to do this bit. All right, yeah, it saves me doing it with the strimmer. Oh, that last bit I did was mostly weed sound. My hay fever has just gone really bad. I'm, well, I'm struggling to keep my eyes open. But at least it's uh, at least for a load of stuff done, so I can't complain. I was really happy to get all of that stuff done in one day, and it basically has cleared almost everything. We just need to do the edges and a few other bits. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate the support and hope to catch you in the next one. There's a ward on the DV in a town called The World. <coughs> Sorry, <laughs> so, hey, you were so bad. <laughs>